perceived recklessness of the FBI enraged the country and emboldened the neo-Nazi movement. That really went through mainstream America to such an extent that the neo-Nazi side of the movement is able to tap into that feeling. After Ruby Ridge, the second galvanizing incident occurred. It was the burning of the Branch Davidian complex in Waco, Texas, which killed 82 Davidians, 62 of whom were women and children. The Davidians were a religious order that had amassed a huge arsenal for what they felt was the impending Armageddon. The FBI moved in and for nearly two months negotiated with Davidian leader David Koresh. This time, the standoff was broadcast live to the entire nation. Watching outside the Davidian compound was a former soldier named Timothy McVeigh. Incensed over the Ruby Ridge incident, McVeigh had traveled to Waco, where he watched as the FBI imposed its will on the Branch Davidians. McVeigh was outwardly neo-Nazi, and what he saw at Waco was the last straw. And waiting with instructions in Timothy McVeigh's mind was Earl Turner, the militant star of William Pierce's Turner Diaries. The book was about to come to life once again. Timothy McVeigh was a very big fan of the Turner Diaries. He encouraged his friends to read it. And as he went from gun show to gun show, which is how he made his living, uh, he would also sell the Turner Diaries. Timothy McVeigh is a classic student of the Turner Diaries and a person carrying out what I think William Pierce wants people to do, commit horrible acts against the United States government. After Ruby Ridge and Waco, McVeigh had become so disgusted with the government that he felt it was time to act. Many believe the action he chose was lifted straight from the Turner Diaries, except in McVeigh's world, he substituted the bombing of an FBI building with the federal building in Oklahoma City, where hundreds of innocent men and women worked. The building also housed a daycare facility for the children of the working parents. There's an incident in the Turner Diaries where FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. is blown up uh, by way of a truck bomb. And it bears a striking resemblance to what happened down in Oklahoma City in April 1995. Timothy McVeigh became a mass murderer at 9.02 a.m. on April 19, 1995, when he detonated a bomb that destroyed the Oklahoma City Federal Building. The blast killed 168 people, including 19 children. The explosion shook the world and precipitated a massive manhunt for the perpetrator. Two days later, Timothy McVeigh was pulled over for a routine traffic stop. Laying on the front seat of his car were Xerox passages from the Turner Diaries. Exhibit one in Timothy McVeigh's trial was the Turner Diaries. And he set his bomb off at almost the exact time that the bomb was set off in the fictional account of the explosion of a federal building by the Aryan warriors in the Turner Diary. If someone does something which is of a criminal nature, and he also has read one of the books that I have written, I feel no responsibility for that. None of the books that I've written advocate criminal activity. During the trial, it was revealed that McVeigh had made one phone call to William Pierce's National Alliance headquarters in West Virginia just prior to the bombing. The call went unanswered. In the Turner Diaries, the FBI bombing was a precursor to revolution. Instead, the actual bombing pushed many away from the movement because of the violence inflicted on so many innocent people. They thought it would be the first blow in the next American Revolution. And what it did was it kind of got the fence sitters out of the way and it left those hardcore individuals. And so it caused the changing of the whole neo-Nazi militia movement in America. In the end, William Pierce was protected by his right to free speech. Many, however, felt William Pierce was aware of and thrived on the power of the Turner Diaries on the neo-Nazi movement. See, I, I've never met him. I've never spoken with him, so I don't know. I don't know what effect the book had on him. 
But I think that most people who read the Turner Diaries read them in the way I intended. I think most people understand that a mortar attack on the U.S. Capitol or blowing up FBI headquarters and so on, that these are just exciting plot elements. Since the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, the National Alliance has continued to instruct those in the neo-Nazi movement through their propaganda and weekly radio broadcasts. Even after Pierce's death in 2002, the influence of the Turner Diaries continues, and as long as there are neo-Nazis willing to act, innocent Americans may be the ones who pay the price. During his reign as the leader of the neo-Nazi movement, the late William Pierce was protected by the right to free speech. His West Virginia complex was a virtual clearinghouse for neo-Nazi and white supremacist literature. His number one seller, the Turner Diaries. As the Nazi movement successfully exploited the freedom of speech, another basic freedom contained in the First Amendment was being used to propagate Nazism. Freedom of religion became the new Nazi ally. And no one used it better than Pastor Richard Butler, the late spiritual leader of the neo-Nazi movement. Before his death in 2004, Pastor Butler warned America of an upcoming ethnic cleansing.